Okay, so this is part three of module one, um, the final video. And this part is specifically going to focus on this idea of profiling data. And profiling data is essentially exploring data. Now, I want to distinguish, though, from calling it exploratory data analysis um, because it's a little different. So data profiling is the initial analyzing and examining data to understand the structure, quality, content of the data before further work is done. Um, your purpose is to gain insights into the characteristics of the data, what the variables are, um, identify patterns, detect anomalies, and assess overall quality. Okay. Data profiling is the foundation for your data wrangling, essentially. Um, you have to understand the data before you start doing anything with it. So data profiling essentially becomes a first step. Once you get the data, um, get it into your system and do some profiling. Now, profiling should be documented. There isn't really like, you know, there's certain things you should do to profile data. It's not like it's 100% set in stone, like you have to do this. Um, I like to distinguish this from exploratory data analysis, which is what we call this in statistics. But exploratory data analysis really refers to sort of just like the fundamental statistics, like looking at distributions and mean, medians, modes, whereas profiling also refers to like the variable types and is sort of a bigger, profiling is sort of a bigger, a bigger part than just exploratory data analysis. Um, so ideally, if you're just the luckiest person alive, you have a data dictionary that comes with your data that will help you immensely to profile it. Um, if not, you kind of have to do this yourself. Like, you know, you sort of first have to look at your data and figure out the variables are, um, which is not fun and nice, but you have to do it. Now, if you worked on, like, if you're working in backend data from an electronic medical record system, call the company that makes the software and they will usually be willing to speak to you and talk to you and explain to you what the data is. I mean, you know, some of that data, like it might have a thousand variables and I'll put for electronic medical system. I mean, it's, it's, you know, but <coughs> the company that makes the software, somebody somewhere knows what those data are and where they come from. Even better if somebody could ever show you like, you know, the front end of the electronic medical system, what people are entering, what's coming out at the end for any system, like um, sales, whatever. Um, so, but ideally you would have existing documentation. Um, in reality, people don't do this. Um, they just don't. I mean, you know, it's just like good practice is not always there. I mean, and we can't make them. So you may end up with a data set where you have this huge data set with no explanation of what it is. And so what you have to do is sit down and figure it out. <laughs> Sorry, folks, that's what you have to do, I'm being honest. Um, metadata is the word for data about data. So like the data dictionary would do that. Now SAS and the higher end stuff, I mean, this is why SAS costs a fortune because it has these features. Um, SAS will essentially produce data dictionaries. Like if you know the SAS language and how to get stuff out of it, you can actually run functions that will actually generate data dictionaries for you on your SAS data, but you're probably not going to be that lucky. Um, you might get a bunch of garbage in a spreadsheet and be like, what does variable X2 mean? And, you know, some cases you're just going to be like, I don't know. Um, so if you know the source, go back and give them a phone call. Um, but you get the idea. Um, as a general recipe for data profiling, what you should do is you should review the data source, the content and structure of the data. Um, you should profile categorical variables because categorical and numeric, I mean, there's basically still, you know, despite there being sort of nitpickies about data types, basically data is numeric or it's not numeric. If it's numeric, you can do your sort of exploratory basic statistics kind of stuff. If it's not numeric, profiling will typically involve like frequency charts and things, I, fre yeah, frequency distributions, things that you can do with your categorical variables um, because they're not quantitative. You can't, you can't do means, medians, modes, and box plots with them. Um, and then document your issues and how you plan to address those. Okay. So when you review your data source again, where did the data come from? Is it trustworthy? Um, another thing that I kind of forgot to mention in the source part is when, when was the data collected? Out, outdated data is useless. I mean, it depends on the context, but for the most part, this keeps analysts in business because it's not like you analyze something and it's, you know, it's going to be for life and you don't have to do it again. Most stuff, like, I mean, real estate data changes about every six weeks. I mean, you can't use old data. So, um, consider the timing of the data, the content, what variables are in it. Um, does it have what you need to analyze? If you have an, an, an analytics plan and you need to analyze certain things, is the data that you're given going to be able to answer those questions? Um, that's important, right? Because don't waste, you know, three weeks cleaning up data that doesn't have the variables you need to analyze it. What you need to do instead is go find the, go find some other source of data that might be able to answer your, your questions or change the questions. I don't know. Um, are the variable names sensible and do they contain re relevant data? 
You can change the variable names. We're going to learn how to do that. It's very simple, but um, don't overwrite the original data. Always keep it. What's the structure of the data? Um, aggregated data, summarized data. You know, this would be like the number of students in major as opposed to having, you know, 10 versus having an individual line for each student. So the granular data means that you have every individual like source line. Aggregated data means it's already summarizable. It's not necessarily bad to use aggregated. It depends on the context. Um, aggregated data has lost that sort of basic information, but you know, that might be okay depending on what you're doing. Um, is your data long or wide? Right now you don't necessarily know what that means, but we need, we need to restructure, right? Keep in mind that the cleaning, modifying, restructuring paradigm that we're going to follow for this class. Um, after step one, do you understand the data? Um, working with data you don't understand is pointless. You must at least understand it to a certain point where it's sensible to you. There may be things you don't fully understand. Um, you, you might have to figure things out as you go, but when you start analyzing data, it shouldn't be like you have no clue. Um, if you don't understand the data, you know, you can always do some research. Most reasonable employers will give you time if you're analyzing data to figure it out, you know, do some research, learn it, learn about the topic. Um, consult with a domain expert. Very ideally, you know, um, the people that made the software, um, who collected the data, the researchers, the management. Um, do this sooner rather than later because if you don't know what the data is about and you take guesses, you're going to just kind of like be wasting your time in some cases. Um, if the data is not timely, is there a more recent data you can obtain? Like maybe they sent you sales data from last year. Call them up and get this year's sales data. Um, profiling categorical variables, uh, second part. Categorical data is data that is not numeric. So your basic quantitative data um, is categorical data. Typically, I would use frequency tables. Frequency tables will detect all kinds of issues. Categorical data is usually reasonably simple to fix. In this course, we'll, you know, look into Excel. I actually personally think Excel is more useful than programming for a lot of this stuff, um, which is why originally the course title was to be more programming oriented, and it is more Excel oriented. We're still going to use R, but you know, when, when I did most of the stuff, I used Excel, even though I had SAS and R and everything else, I still went into Excel to do a lot of stuff. So, you know, you can fix a lot of categorical issues with find replace. Um, so frequency tables, and you can do pivot tables in Excel, we'll do those in the next module. Um, that's how you fix them. And here's just some stupid examples that I was playing around and generated. Um, so, you know, spelling errors and fixing things, you can, there's functions in Excel that will change the capitalization of these and make them all consistent. Um, you know, spelling errors, spelling errors are usually not super hard to fix. Um, find replace is like your buddy. Um, you know, so these kinds of things. Um, and that's typically what I would do. A cross tab is another thing you can do. A cross tab is one variable by another. We do these stats too with chi-square analysis. Um, but if anything looks funny, like, you know, you do a cross tab and you see like, you know, all the females got Fs and all the males got As, um, that's, there's something biased about your data. I mean, it is what it is. Um, you're not here to necessarily, um, you don't change the data, you analyze it, but it will give you a clue as to what's going on in your data when you see things like that. Um, categorical variables can be graphed with various, this is just a frequency chart, it's pretty, but your goal in profiling is not prettiness and presentation. Presentation and graphing is data visualization communication issues. When you're profiling, you're diagnosing things, it's not likely that anybody's really going to see your profile plots except for you. Um, so don't like futz around and make things pretty, although this one's kind of pretty. Um, this is a mosaic plot of two categorical variables. Um, so that's your categorical analysis. Numeric data, again, you can do frequency tables for just about everything. Not everything, though. There's a couple exceptions to that. Um, binning quantitative data, everybody learns how to do this in stats one. Um, histograms, again, everybody learns this in stats one, two, to look at distributions. Um, stats one pretty much covers a lot about this kind of stuff. So everybody in here should kind of know this stuff. Box plots are your five number summary. They're great for identifying outliers. Um, looking at the distribution of data. I don't even know what data this is. Sorry, I forgot. But um, summary metrics, again, your stats one material. Measures of center, measures of spread. Those are always kind of redundant with looking at the distributions. But, um, you know, what, what do you have? What's going on there? Um, that should say mode, not model. I got to fix that. It bothers me. Um, I think I did a spell check and it picked up on that. All right. So, you know, um, look at your basics 
basic stuff. Um, this just comes from Excel, like um, descriptive stats type of thing um, with the data toolkit. Um, and when you finish profiling, you should document your issues as well as probably keep everything profiled. Um, much of this course is going to deal with how to remedy these issues. Essentially, you know, this profiling can give you what your issues are. And then, um, I mean, if you have no issues, great. That's kind of surprising, though. But even if you have no issues, like in terms of data being inconsistent or whatever, um, you still, the elements of this course, like the, the first two units of cleaning um, might not be as applicable, but the final unit of restructuring, you may still need to add data or aggregate data. So even if you have perfect data, you still probably will do some wrangling on it. Um, so you should document what you find in your profiling. And what you will do for exercise three is, um, I wrote up in R, there's a couple packages that do automated profiling, and you, of course, are going to do that. And then that profile that you do is actually going to become what you discuss and present for week two. Um, so you'll get some hands-on data profiling experience. Um, and that is the end of uh, mod one, week one material for the lecture part. Um, awesome. We're good.